So in the last lecture, we have seen how to write matrix representations for a point group. And we also saw that the number of ways of writing a matrix representation for a particular point group is limited by our imagination of uh, having a particular basis set. So if you can choose a large number of basis sets, you can have a large number of matrix representations. Now let us consider two such matrix representations under basis sets, let's say B1 and B2. So let's consider, uh, suppose, So suppose B1 and B2 are uh, basis sets of same order. That is the number of vectors which are chosen in the basis are same. So the dimensionality of the matrix for D1 and D2 will also be same. Also, if trace of the matrix is equal to trace of the matrix D2, we call the representations D1 and D2 as equivalent. Now this is very, very important here. So because we are saying that the trace of the matrix D1 is equal to trace of the matrix D2. So in such cases, we call the representations as equivalent. So what is trace, uh, by the way? So uh, those who don't know what is trace, uh, uh, so trace of a square matrix is equal to sum of diagonal elements. Of the matrix. All right. So now let us say that uh, we take a similarity transformation. So let's consider a group first G where uh, group elements are E, A, B and so on. Now if we consider, if we take of every element under G, by some other matrix called Q. Okay, so in that case, we can write Q inverse A Q will be equal to, let's call it as A prime. Similarly, Q inverse B Q, let's call it as B prime, and so on. Okay. So now what we are trying to see is that this new set of matrices is also a representation of the group. So how do we uh, show that? Let us uh, calculate the product a B or A prime B prime. So we will see Q inverse A Q Q inverse B Q and we can write this as Q inverse A Q Q inverse B Q. Now this term goes to E. So we can remove this. Then we will have Q inverse A B Q. And let's say if A B is equal to T, we can say A prime B prime is equal to Q inverse D Q. And now this can be called as D prime. Thus we can show that if A, B and so on, D are 
representations of a group then upon similarity transformation we obtain an alternate uh, matrix representation which also is a matrix representation for the group G right so that is easy to see now let us move ahead and try to show that similarity transformation does not change the so what we are trying to show is similarity transformation does not change the trace of a matrix okay so this is what we want to prove so that means what we want to prove is that if a prime is equal to Q inverse A Q then this is I'm just writing the same statement mathematically then trace of A should be equal to trace of A prime okay so to prove this we first we will have to prove that let us start with proving trace of a b is equal to trace of b a and that is true even if a and b do not commute with each other see these are matrices and it is not necessary that the product a b will be equal to product b a so even if the product is not equal the trace would still be equal that's what we are going to prove first to be able to prove the above statement so let us start writing the matrix product in any general form so we can write this as two different matrices so we can say that this is a11 this is a21 and so on a n1 this will be a12 and we can say that this will be a1n right similarly we can write this as b11 b12 b1n so i'm just writing a general matrix ab b21 b n1 right now to write the product of this i can write it as a11 so i will take this row and this column and multiply the corresponding elements to write the first column or first row right so a11 b11 plus a12 b21 plus a13 this you all uh, are very well aware of and the last one will be a1 n b n1 this is my first element of first column first row so similarly i can say that I can write the last element in this as a n1 b11 plus a n2 b21 plus a n3 b31 plus a n n b n1 right and similarly here if I go I can write the other elements so this will be the general product so let's say if I want to write this product in short notation so I can write it as ij and I can say that any element of this product matrix can be written as a i 1 b 1 j plus a i 2 b to j plus a i n 
p and j right this is easy to see so we can also say that this can be written as a i k b k j where k goes from 1 to n right we can write it as a summation this is a general element a b i j now because we are interested in determining the trace so and for the trace we need to have the diagonal elements so how to write the diagonal element diagonal element will be where indices i and j will be same so basically we can write a b i i which will be equal to summation k goes from 1 to n a i k and b k i right this will be my diagonal element now trace of a b is equal to summation of diagonal elements where i goes from 1 to n right so i can say summation i of summation k a i k b k i right double summation of a i k and b k i so because these two are numbers so i can always a i k and b k i are numbers individual numbers of the matrix remember that these are the matrix elements these are not matrices anymore so i can always exchange these terms right so this will be a b So I can also invert the summation and I can write it as B K I and A I K. Now this because the summation of I is also from 1 to N and K is also from 1 to N. So I can easily write this as trace of B A. Right. So irrespective of whether we are given that a and b are commuting or not we have shown that trace of a b is equal to trace of b a okay that's a very important result so now let us try to prove the thing which we wanted to to start with that similarity transformation does not change the trace so trace of a prime is equal to trace of a now this is very straightforward so trace of a prime will be equal to trace of q inverse a q and now treat this as maybe a matrix let's say x and this as this complete product as y so i can always write it as trace of a q into q inverse we have just now seen that uh, trace of a b is equal to trace of b s so we can say trace of x y is equal to trace of y x now this implies that q q inverse will be equal to e so this will be trace of a so we have very easily shown that trace of a inverse is equal to trace of a now why is that important because we have shown that similarity transformation does not change the trace and we know that elements which belong to same class are similarity transformations of each other so let me write it down So thus if we have determined the matrix representation of one of the class elements we don't need to determine the matrix representation for rest of the class elements because the trace of the two elements will be equal. So if we want to work with only trace and we will see later that uh, we don't need to actually work with the complete matrix we can work with trace itself to look at the various properties of those symmetry operations or group elements so then in that case we can actually save time and write just the 
matrix representation for one of the class elements and take the trace as to be seen right so for example in case of nh3 molecule we saw that writing for sigma v1 was very trivial whereas writing because nh1 bond vector was lying along yz plane whereas uh, writing for sigma v2 was not as trivial and we had to actually carry out the axis transformation to be able to write the matrix representation for sigma v2 right if you follow previous lectures so now in this case uh, because these sigma v1 sigma v2 and sigma v3 all belong to same class and if we have written the matrix representation for sigma v1 we can just take the trace of this and that trace will be equal to trace of uh, matrix for sigma v2 and sigma v3 right so we don't need to write matrix representation to find the trace here so we can just take the trace and put it equal to trace of matrix for this two so that makes our calculations very easy okay this is just another way to work around so now we have seen uh, how to write matrix representations and what are different ways of writing matrix representations and now let us move ahead and see what are different ways of writing characters or traces so we have defined here yeah so here we have defined trace of a square matrix as some of the diagonal elements this is also called as character so character or trace okay so i'll be intermittently using the term either trace or character both of them means the same thing all right so another way of defining a representation So another way of defining a representation is by replacing multiplication symbols in GMT by characters. So what do I mean by characters? So characters can take any form. So let us define the characters. What are the different types of characters? We have seen that trace of square matrices can be characters. So let us see trace of square matrices we can also write square matrices as a representation right well we can also write uh, numbers given that they follow the rules of gmt then these numbers can also be imaginary or real these can also be product of trigonometry functions so why are we discussing this let us see that let us again take the example of water so under c2v point group we had e c2 sigma v1 sigma v2 now let us say that one of the representation we have seen that using x y z basis we got three cross three matrix and we wrote that matrix as the representation now i am saying that i can choose numbers also as long as those numbers follow the rules of gmt so what do i mean by follow the rules of gmt let us say i define e as character 1 c2 as character 1 sigma v1 as character 1 sigma v2 as character 1 now if i write gmt using those characters that is if i write e c2 sigma v1 sigma v2 now here also i'll have to write the same thing right so now if i'm writing 1 one 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 all the products will be one one right now we see that 
C2 into C2 is given by 1 and the character under C2 was 1. So, and we know that, sorry, character under E was 1. We know that C2 into C2 is E and E is given by 1, right? So, it does follow the rules of GMT. Similarly, here, if we see that sigma V1 into C2, whatever product it should give, it is giving as 1 and then we are getting it sigma V2, 1 under sigma V2. So basically, all the products are following the characters which are defined by E, C2, sigma V1, sigma V2, right? So let us take, this is, let's call this as one representation. Let us call this another representation as, as tau let us say that now I'm choosing minus one minus one for all. So in that case, I will have, so what do I have? So minus one into minus one, I should get plus one here then, right? So let me just rub this off and write the products again, using minus one as the character for all four. Now, if I do E into E, that means I should get E here. But if I do minus 1 into minus 1, what I get here is plus 1. What I get is plus 1. So that means now it is not following the GMT table. So the products are not giving me the correct representations if I choose minus 1 as the character for all four. So that means this does not form a representation under this C2V point group, right? So let us uh, write more types. Let's see if I have 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Let's take two of them as negatives and two of them as positives. So we will see what is the meaning of all of this later. But let's say this is one way of writing a representation. Okay. So let's say now if we do E into E, E into E will be 1 into 1, which will be 1. C2 into E will be 1 into C2, which will be 1. Sigma V1 is minus 1. Sigma V1 into E will be minus 1. So it does follow. And similarly here, this will also follow. So now if you see, if you calculate rest of the products also, you will see that it will follow all the products nicely using this. So similarly, we can define other representations where these numbers or these characters are defined by any of these. These can be either trace of the square matrices or square matrices itself or the numbers like we have seen. They can be imaginary numbers also. And they can also be product of various trigonometric functions like we can have cos theta, sin theta and so on and so forth, right? So this is another way of defining how to write a representation. So let us now quickly see uh, if we can move to unit vector transformations. So why are we, why do we want to write, what is a unit vector transformation? Unit vector transformation are the unit vectors along coordinate systems. So if we have x, y, z as coordinate system, this is my unit vector along x, this is my unit vector along y, this is my unit vector along z. And now we can write transformation matrix representations for different point groups when we choose bases as individual unit vectors. Instead of taking x, y, z completely as the basis set, now we can take unit vectors as the basis set and write down our representation. For example, under let's again write C to V point group. So if I want to write the matrix under, let's say X as my basis, C2 also X. So I'm transforming using Sigma V1 or Sigma V X Z for X sigma v y z for x right so what do i get here i get x here x will be replaced with minus x this will be x 
and this will be minus x right so sigma xz on operating on x will give you x back sigma yz operating on x will give you minus x right so if i now want to write the matrices the matrix corresponding matrices will be so let's call this representation as tau x so this will be 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 right now similarly if we want to write for tau y e operating on y will give you y so the matrix will be 1 c2 operating on y will give you minus y so matrix will be minus 1 sigma xz will give you minus y and sigma yz will give you plus y so matrix will be 1 now tau z will give you what does it give you e operating on z will give you z back c2z operating on z will give you z back sigma xz on z will give you z sigma yz on z will give you z right so basically we will get square matrices of order one and we can see that these characters are the same uh, characters as we defined by trial and error method right so if you see this tau one actually matches with the tau z character here right so these are called as unit vector transformations and we will see that when we discuss reducible and irreducible representations this will be very useful okay so in a similar way there is also rotation vectors which can also be taken as the basis set so rotation vectors are called as rx are denoted as ry rz and what are these basically these are if i take this xyz these are the rotations so let's consider this as anti-clockwise rotation when I'm looking from x-axis positive side of the axis towards origin okay so this vector rotation vector is called as rx vector similarly if I have to write ry so this will be ry and for rz this will be rz okay so in all three times I have what I have done is I have drawn uh, anti-clockwise rotation vector when I'm looking from the positive side of the axis towards origin okay so now if I carry out these operations on to these vectors what kind of characters do I get okay so I think let us stop here and then let us discuss that in next class because we have already spent close to 30 minutes so we'll discuss unit vector transformations using rotation vectors in next class okay thank you